Hello, hello YouTube. Welcome into Timberborn Update 5, where we're going to play with some wonderfully delicious bad water. The uh, the experimental branch has finally run its course. Now it's live. Uh, it's been live for about a week and a half now, so things are getting a little, a little dicey, a little spicy. A lot of people are out there. They're playing. They're experimenting. They're, they're, they're excited that the actual... Uh, game has made some major updates. We're beyond update four, obviously. That, that five is greater than four. It happens. I'm sorry. Uh, here we are. Things have progressed further. No longer are we dealing with the the day in and day out of just the drought cycle. The drought cycle is painful, especially if you're on, playing on hard mode with the potential of up to 30 days worth of the, the drought, which is always fun. Um, but now they've added the bad tide. The bad tide, if you haven't seen that, is absolutely devastating. It tears down everything. It crops, it makes things unbearable. You can't do anything with it until you get settled in. And then you can start doing some fantastic stuff with the bad tide. However, that takes some time. It takes some perseverance. It takes a little bit of uh, finagling to get to the point where you're, you've settled yourself down. Your colony of beavers is nice and here um that being said this is my first major attempt on the update i've done a playthrough a couple of times and uh at the end of the video i'll drop back in i'll show you some of the stuff that i did on the experimental branch um nothing too fantastic i'm not exactly the best when it comes to these city builders i have a blast with them so i hope that you guys can have a blast with me as we play through a brand new round uh update five bad tides so let's get into the game we're going to start a new game the only mod that I have here is going to be the uh, the naming mod. Uh, I do have a Twitch channel. I have some subscriptions over there, some fantastic friendos that support the channel. Uh, so they have the pleasure of jumping in on this, uh, this first playthrough with us. You'll see their names pop up, and they'll cycle through and all that. But that's the only mod we'll be playing with. So essentially vanilla. Um, mm, I'm going to... Start here um, with the folktales. The folktales will be what we'll be playing with. It's a bit easier to control, like population development, population growth with the folktales than the mm, iron teeth. Uh, I enjoy the iron teeth because they have ample opportunity for like excessive amounts of power in a growth of the civilization. They have awesome uh, tools and technology, like the the generators, and they've got. The ability to do some other fun things with the bad tide that the uh, folktales don't. However, the folktale they just seem to be more happy with the life, their lot in life, if you will. Um, so I I kind of like them for that. The the draws for the folktale we'll get into as we as we delve into this, and you'll you'll see that as the uh, hard mode progresses, which is what we're gonna be playing in today. We're gonna be playing hard mode. So that'll be fun. We'll get to see the progression of like the short droughts into the god awful five to fifteen to thirty day droughts, and even up to thirty days of bad tide. So that's gonna be fun. Um, as far as where we're going, I haven't decided yet. So we get to do this live. Uh, last playthrough I did on diorama. That was a lot of fun. I want to try a bigger map so I can take full advantage of the entire. Uh, platform to play with so we get some fantastic uh, beaver growth if you will taking over large swaths of land so that we can get them get our beaver friends to a point where they are self-sufficient and no longer have to be constantly worrying about that next cycle so I think what we're gonna do is we're going to jump into the helix mountain here um, it is, this is the last or the second to last one that they actually did an update with the Bad Tide. Uh, a few of the other maps that they dropped in do not have the Bad Tide actually appropriately put in. They still do the Bad Tide cycles is my understanding, but they don't, you don't get to see the Bad Tide until that, those things uh, are until the Bad Tide cycle. That's outside of the purview of what we're going to be playing with. So here we are. We're going to start off, we're going to call this Shadowsburg because I am me. And we like to have fun with uh, funny names. And that'll be where we're at. This will be Shadowsburg 1. So this is, since this is playthrough number one on YouTube with everybody. But I'm going to pause it here. We're going to pause. We're going to pause this game because this is, this is hard mode. Hard mode is not fun. Hard mode is a huge, huge pain in the ass. Hard mode does what hard mode does. So this source of water will completely 
die out, which is absolutely brilliant, right? So you lose all these water sources. All of this will dry out. All of this will dry out eventually, or it'll completely flop into this bad tide. So this is the this is the bad water. Bad water is bad. Here's the bad water sources. We don't like that. That stuff is bad for your health. It's bad for the beaver's health. Nobody wants to be in that. Nobody wants to touch it. You know, you don't want a sick beaver. Nobody wants a sick beaver. We want happy, happy wet beavers that are enjoying chewing on their logs, enjoying some berries, enjoying some carrots, so on and so forth. So that's what we're going to try to do today. We're going to try to get to a point where these little guys can have a nice, comfortable state of living. Is that going to happen? We'll see. Um, hard mode hard mode has been known to take me down a peg or two. All right, I thought I've gotten everything settled. Everybody's happy. And then the entire game flips upside down. And then everybody dies. And I'm a sad guy because I don't like dead beavers, right? Nobody likes a dead beaver. That being said, we're going to have to plan out pretty early. While they are chillaxing, waiting in the pause mode here. So we're going to build back in here. Get some of this stuff ready to be taken down. So we want all this wood back here. We want all this wood over here. Eventually we're going to want to get over here to get access to all this wood. As well as to these berries. And access to all this arable land back here. And then I think at some point we're going to have to start thinking about... Uh, diverting the bad tide because that's going to be the big big go especially early game uh is either building up enough required materials to survive the bad tide so they don't have to pump any water during that time or having and food or divert it entirely and have this area completely arable throughout the entire season which is the end goal which is what we want to get to but at the beginning it's kind of kind of hard to get there so that's the that's where we're gonna work towards. For now, we've got to meet the minimum basic requirements, which is food and water and shelter. We'll hold off on shelter for now because food and water are paramount. For anything that you do as a beaver, you need food to shove into your mouth and you need water to, you know, wash that food down. So we're gonna focus on that and focus on getting some storage here, getting enough water storage. For these guys, we, I like to start out with three, three storage parts for these guys because they, that first drought's not too egregious. It's when things progress further on, when when the droughts get painful. So we want to prepare for that as, as soon as possible. So the more uh, water storage that we can get, the greater. Um, and things like that are always going to be on the back of our mind, right? Um, then on top of that, we need to start thinking forward. We're going to need some science building up here, and we're also going to need some farming going. The earlier that we can get the farming up and running, the better, because we want to have as much water and food for that first drought cycle. We don't want all of our stuff to be drying out on us. Um, I want to have as much of this accessible as I can. So that's what we're going to work here. I'm going to up the construction priority on this guy. Let's drop that to there and make that a high priority and as well as that. And we'll make this one a high priority and leave the others for regular priority. Of course, they can't do anything if we don't have anybody chopping down all of this wood for us. And of course, we have to get the basic minimum food up and running. Beginning, I like to plus these guys up to a four. Our, uh, our, our Twitch subscribers there, the fantastic human beings, fantastic friendos. Um, get all that set up. So science, because we're definitely going to want to start working our way towards things like the forester, and then stuff like the uh, our wooden stairs. Stairs are going to be needed for getting across and fording. Uh, some different areas like over here. We're going to eventually dam some of this off so we can maintain some water back in here. We're going to dam some of this off so we can maintain water here. And yeah, eventually get to the point where we can levy some of this off. I'm thinking this is where we're going to divert our, our bad water. This will be the best spot right here. At least that's what I've seen in my playthroughs on this map here what am i missing what else am i missing i'm missing storage so we need some storage 
We want to throw that back there. That'll be our carrot storage for the first go, right? Throw down, let's go ahead and pre-plant all these carrots. So I want this back here. So I like putting this back here because all this is gonna turn into, if we don't get the bad water uh, diverted, the bad tide diverted, this all becomes basically trash. Trash land, it's gonna have what is happening over here, right? So this is all bad water. And you can see what happens to the land with this bad water. The beavers can still traverse it. It doesn't get them sick, but cannot plant on it. Um, there are some some background stuff. So in, if there's half and half, bad water, half water, then it's still arable land and you can kind of plant on it. You can see that how that works and we'll probably get to that in a little bit. Probably not on today's video, but in future playthroughs, of this uh this go you definitely we'll see we'll see that we'll definitely see that Let, let's see what else are we missing here um plant some more food so let's get some sunflower seeds and these guys like sunflower seeds they'll they'll tear through those pretty fast we're gonna hold off on planting potatoes that'll be the next tier of food item that we're gonna want to get into um I want to hold off on that until I have a constant supply of wood coming in because in order to make potatoes you need to actually have the grill. The grill takes wood and potatoes and produces four baked potatoes or grilled potatoes. Which is great, which is fantastic, but I have a limited supply, limited supply of wood right now. And until we get that uh, forester unlocked so we can start Planting or replanting some of these pines and or getting in some um, additional items. I think that's where we're going to be stuck at for now. All right. Some other stuff to be thinking about going forward. Um, want a lumber mill as soon as possible. Probably toss that in here. Probably not the best spot for it, honestly. But it will have to do. Actually, let's rotate this around. Flip that. Do I want this here? I think I want this here. No, I want this over here. We're going to flip that again. Throw that in there. Get a power source in here. So I don't... So um, with update 5, they did change some things. So the power wheel is now a folktale exclusive. Um, which is cool. I like the iron teeth. Uh work wheel if you will it's got four guys that run it it can power up to 300 horsepower which is in a substantial amount of energy it does require four beavers which is painful uh but during the early game it's pretty nice to have especially when you're dealing with droughts that are sapping away your your source of power right um that being said i am gonna toss a water wheel not there actually so I don't want to unpause it because if I do, everything's going to run and time is of the essence when you're playing on hard mode. But I'm not sure if this is going to be a good spot, honestly, for, for power production because this is going to feed around here and it's going to get a little awkward. So maybe I'll unpause it. Speed it up just a tad bit. Let them work for a little bit. We can watch the water flow so it seems consistent across the board this looks pretty good down here so i might be able to sneak a water or power wheel in here a water wheel it won't get the most power but it will help and if i prioritize that over the lumber mill this guy right here then it could get built or if i just make it spot where the access to it it's always a smarter idea so it'll work there. And we're going to pause it again because I completely forgot to come in here and tell these guys to start chopping stuff down. Um, early game, I like to do the crosshatch hatch method um, for wood. Except for some of this stuff over here. And like, that's all dead wood. Some of this stuff is back here is dead wood as well. So I'm not concerned about that. None of this is going to get uh, water for a minute. Come back here and we can select all of the dead pine trees for 
tear down early and then the rest of the stuff i like to go into the crosshatch so uh trees do actually reproduce if you leave them not marked for replanting and if you don't chop them all down so as long as there are a couple around they can reproduce and create these little pine seedlings and they'll drop and they'll they'll take their 12 days regrow which is good but it's not sustainable right and we want to get to a point where everything is being taken care of by the beavers we're not waiting on uh, rng for a seedling to drop said we're gonna go through here click all this slowly and painfully you guys get to enjoy my sultry voice as i click all these buttons here it's gonna be great it's gonna be huge it'll be the greatest thing since sliced bread just slowly click misclick a couple of times because i'm a goober we are boom 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 that clicked we start working this is arduous i know i understand it's a it's a pain in the butt and i've already fooked i fooked myself already mark that but in the beginning this is a really really smart way to ensure that you have a continued source or a continuing source of logs what we need this is what they live off of at least as far as the betterment of their society if they don't have logs then they can't build anything if we can't build anything we can't make things better for them and that's no fun nobody likes a beaver who's inactive we all like to see beavers working working away building dams and whatnot and they need wood in order to do that so we want to do our best to make sure that they have ample access to that wood everybody likes a good beaver who has plenty of wood to work with Try, go slowly work through here i know it's a riveting game riveting absolutely riveting. once we get this done much pain there boom boom right Slowly work all of this. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Bada bing. That should be good. Everything should be marked. At least what needs to be marked for now. And now we can hit that play button. We'll get everything up and running. These guys now have something to do. So they're going to get in here. Slow this back down to regular speed and look at these guys already chomping away clear out that marker boom one thing that they did do with the experimental branch which is or with the update is uh, add some new animations which is pretty cool so we can watch these little guys they'll come over here and uh, originally they didn't actually gnaw on the logs before they just kind of uh, i don't want to say dry humped them but they kind of just dry humped them now they actually chomp on them which is pretty cool and you can see the uh, the pine tree here wiggling, which is pretty fun. Pardon my terrible uh, camera work as I maneuver. You can see these little guys just going at it, going ham, doing great things for beaver kind. I love it. Good beaver is uh, doing good things for the colony, right? Everybody loves that. Grab prioritize there, and that's good. So now we've got wood coming in. We have six. We have 108 berries to start out with. Fantastic. Um, I do want a storage place for berries because those berries potentially, er, so we want, we want them to be picking the beer, berries, berries, not beavers. We want them to be picking the berries as they, as they, uh, reach maturity, right? The, the faster we get them picked, that means the faster that they can get back into the cycle of regrowth. You can see the cycle of regrowth is about 12 days, 12 days is a long time especially when you're talking minimum the lowest temperate cycle is six days on hard mode which can be absolutely painful and if you don't have 
the food to make it through that, then you ain't gonna be doing anything good with your life. And nobody likes that. I am gonna plus up their work day a little bit because this is the first day. They don't have water, which isn't good. They're gonna be thirsty here in a second. You can actually see their their meters here. This guy is getting pretty close to being thirsty. Nobody likes that. That is Ella. Ella's still a baby, so Ella's not doing anything productive for our society. Sad day. But we do have some workers in here. We've got Zaraki, Ashley, Kabuchter, and Cat Argent working away, toiling with all of their logs to build our wonderful places for them to work. So I'm going to get Malty in here. Malty's going to kick ass and pump some logs for us, which means we get water. You guys are going to need water. Soon, they've got probably six to nine hours of water in them right now. We don't want that. We want to have our beavers happy absolutely so we're going to speed up a little bit we're going to pull here we're going to watch this uh, truck along for a few seconds and then start thinking about what we can do next and i forgot to mark these for what they're going to be so that's going to be water this is going to be water as well what well, uh, the, uh, as our friends across the pond like to call it. And prioritize this a little bit so they can get that built soon. We are max capacity as far as jobs are concerned. Good for now. We have four, four jobs going unfilled. Or three of those and then probably one of these over here. Let's see who's not working. Our gather is not working. All right, so we can pause this guy right here. Donnie, you're going to have to go work somewhere else. Donnie should have dropped into here. That's good for now. Probably drop this down. So we'll fire two of these guys. Get them planting. Like I said before, we want food stockpiles galore. More food, the better. And the earlier that happens, the greater everybody's going to be. Everybody wants to be fit. Now we've got food storage for the berries, which is great. We've got a place to put these excess so that we can start stockpiling that for the future. Thankfully, they're not playing with the iron teeth, which require the beaver or berries in order to reproduce. So that'll be good. However, the folk tales have the, the happiness scale and the housing mechanic. So these guys will not reproduce if their happiness levels are too low and if there's not space for them to actually go into. So, in order to meet that requirement, we will have to build some lodging for these guys. And probably soon, because they do have, they will expire. These poor little guys, they will die on us. This, Ashley's 16 right now, Cat is 20, and they don't have any pluses to their life expectancy. So, these guys will live to be about 50, and we have our first drought coming in. That's no fun. Why are you guys thirsty? Drop your work time. And I think what actually need to do jam this up. So if we can get this across here, we're gonna prioritize this. I don't think that we're gonna have enough. Patron, you don't need to be in here. Let's get this unpaused. Have build jobs somewhere. Where is it? It's building wax workers. Okay, that's fine. That's the one. Next construction. So this one can be lowest, lowest construction requirements. That's still marked as high. I want this to be up as possible. Of course, they're mad at me. They're like, okay, you didn't give us a place to sleep. So we're just going to plop down in the field here. Look at these poor little guys. Look at these little guys. Just sad, sadly, sleeping out on the lawn, dreaming about chewing on logs, dreaming about putting delicious carrots in their face. I would love them. I would love for that to happen as soon as possible. Probably what we've got. Two days. Two days for these to come through. We're going to get three carrots per uh, spot here. So what? That's uh, five by five by... Athing in public, so we should have about 160-ish with the little plus over here. 
of carrots. I'm not. I'm. I'm terrible at math on the spot, guys. Don't. Don't at me for that one. Okay. So they're doing that. Let's speed things back up a little bit. I kind of want them to. Uh, science. Shoot. Okay. You. We can pause you. Get you working somewhere else. Probably bust that up again. Now we have enough because we had one guy, one little kit grow up to be an adult beaver. That means we have more jobs to fill. Great. We have one more kit left. And then that last one. So we got QP. QP's going to be growing up here shortly. Within the next day or so. So we'll have a full colony of 12 beavers ready and willing to kick ass and chew bubblegum for us. Be great. It'd be huge. I want to maintain 12. 12 beavers is our men requirement, right? If we can maintain 12, we're going to be doing great. So each of these are going to hold three inhabitants. So that'll be good for them. Probably going to lower these priority-wise just because... Actually, I want to lower these two. We're going to lower these two. We have at least six spots, and even if we have a catastrophic situation drop on us, then we should have a place for them to go. If we are down to our last six beavers, that's going to suck for everybody involved, but we're going to try to avoid that. Now, the, sh the, the first the first drought shouldn't be too agreed. We should have enough food stockpiled, and we should have enough water stockpiled as soon as this pops up. So we'll probably swap those guys over to harvesting so they're not replanting as they're picking plus that up to three so QP's actually grown up now so let's go and we wait and it's night night time on the final day of the temperate season now we're going to go into a drought now this is where things going to get weird or a little little painful if you will so this is the helix mountain the helix mountain this stuff is going to stop producing water so these these little guys in here, our water sources, they're going to stop. This will still be full of water. It will evaporate over time. It takes approximately three to five days for a tile of water, depending on some background information concerning the game and all the mechanics behind that. Uh, determines how fast that all dissipates. Now, it does take time for all of this water to run through this cycle. Or the helix, if you will. So you can see that slowly uh, spinning around the mountain. And then slowly making its way down here. Sadly, we don't have our dam in to stop the exodus of our good water. So everything is going off the map over here. Nobody likes to see that, but that's what we're going to have to deal with for now. And now everything's going to dry out. These carrots should stay alive for a couple days while they're still continuing to harvest them. Which will be good. Our science is slowly moving up. That's that's great. Okay. We actually need to plus up the construction on that guy. And I think we might actually need to do a power wheel on this guy. So, the thing about the Forester, it does require planks. I think it only requires five planks. Or seven planks, sorry. is isn't too egregious, but we do need to spend the logs in order to get the planks. I think it might be time to start thinking about clear cutting some of this because we are we're not getting any more and all of it has gone into trying to produce this dam over here. So I am going to mark some more of this stuff for cutting. Nothing's they did drop some seedlings here, which is great. It looks like that's not going to help us for now. Nothing's growing during the uh, during the drought. Thankfully, it's only a four day drought. Four day droughts pretty nice, pretty easy to deal with. For now, we have plenty of water. We have 62 water. We've got 12 beavers. It's approximately two to two and a half units of water to food per day per beaver. So 24 for the full colony per day. And then uh, 24 water, 24 food per day. We're already halfway. Oh, okay, so it was a five day drought. My goodness. We're about halfway through it. Should have enough food and water to make it through. What we can do, and I've seen this work in the past. I'm not sure if anybody else has been able to reproduce this. Um, 
experiment, if you will. If you drop the work hours, they actually need less food and or water to uh, get through the day. So, kind of makes sense. If you're not working your butt off, that means you're not sweating all of your water out, right? So, this is something I've had to do sometimes, uh, especially when I was doing experimental hard mode, where things were not going too well. The amount of water that I had saved up was not going to meet the requirements for like a 27 day drought once right um like i had a short temperate season and it was right into a, a long drought after having just gotten through a long drought right so working through the work days lowering those has helped reduce the uh the food and water expenditures which is helpful it's good but right now, they don't really have much to be working on. I can pause these guys, let them go do something else with their life. Something a bit more productive. Maybe... I am going to have to path this over here, actually. We are going to path over here. That'll give us access over here. That'll be a lot of wood for us to get into. Each of these are oak trees. These are oak seedlings. That'll take another uh, 20 days or so for that to reach maturity. But all of this back here, this is all dead. Um, but that's eight logs a piece up here, which is going to be fantastic. A good, good plus up on our log requirements. Our science is moving up, though. We do have enough officially for the Forester, so I'm going to unlock that. And I'm going to push this. I'm thinking right here would be the best. And then probably limit the actual area where I'm going to plant our pine trees and, and I'm planting pine because they have the, the quickest growth for the most return uh, a lot of guys avoid the birch like the plague that it is because it does take nine days and you only get one it takes a three additional days and you get two for the pine which is great early game pine is a great way to kick things off because you have ample supply of wood coming in 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 short order now, we have run into a problem. I thought that we would have enough water to make it through the drought. We have 0.3 days left of the drought. That's This next cycle will, or the next day will end. But, again, this problem with this map is this takes about a full day to make it, it make its way all the way around. So the drought has ended. Which is great cycle two has started we are out of water we're not out of food yet we are not planting we don't have anything planted which is no fun but i think i am going to plus up the action amount of carrots over here and probably plus up some more these sunflower seeds oh actually no we're not going to plant that one there delete that guy we have a storage place for the carrots now which is great Back up here. There it goes. There it goes. This everything just turns green. I love it. And that's one of my favorite things to watch playing this game. As the water comes through, it irrigates the land, it makes everything green again. <clears throat> makes everybody happy. But now we've got everybody sat down here. Because they're thirsty. They are a bunch of thirsty beavers. So they shouldn't have a problem until this reaches zero down here. We did get the loss in movement speed right here, right? So they're thirsty. Movement speed drops by 25%. No fun. You can see that as well. And that's going to affect everybody here. As soon as we get guys back up and pumping. It'd be good. That will be great. There's the water. Almost a full cycle and a half. We're going to plus up the work hours just so they can get some water into their systems. We don't want anybody dying on us. Thirsty beaver is a sad beaver. Nobody likes a thirsty sad beaver. Once that work cycle's over, we should have some water. Nope, it's all gone. Alright, 
wait for their little three hour break to kick through and back up. And there's the next. <laughs> like I said, minimum, minimum of six. You are not guaranteed a long temperate cycle. Like that, that is, that is day three. We got the notification that we have another drought on its way, which is absolutely, absolutely painful. We don't have enough logs. Okay, we're going to mark all this over here. You are all getting cut down. I need you yesterday, please, and thank you. We're going to unpause you guys. These are slowly uh, maturing. It'll take some time for them to mature. These guys are still over here dropping seedlings, which is great, but not helpful for us right now. We need this. We need this built now. That is not good for us. All right, so we are out of food, which is another thing that's painful. We're out of food. We're out of water. This is going to take another three days. Three days to reach maturity. We can build this over here. We can get to some of these berries. So might actually... How many more do we have? One, two, three, four, five. Maybe be 100 logs. That's a lot of logs. I think I might have to mark some more of this over here for chopping. Get some more logs. Pronto. Well, they're no longer hungry, which is good. I have some guys in here sitting on their butts. It's not good, but there's not really much they can do. There's only so much that each of these little beavers can get in here, so they... Some will carry the logs. Some will actually come in and do the work behind them. I'm not entirely sure how the mechanics work there. But how it works. We're going to drop this down. So they can actually get some proper rest. They're, out of, they're starving. It's not good. Not good. Now, a beaver can't go a couple days without food. Okay? It's possible. It is possible. Just like a real... Like, like a human can go a couple days without food. These guys can too. It's not good. Nobody likes it because you can see what it does to their their morale. See that it drops their working efficiency by 50%. Their work speed drops because they're hungry. Right? Doesn't help. You guys have another about day and a half. I need I need this built. I need this built now. Pause that for now. It's not doing anything for us. Why are you guys building this? No. Don't build that. Build this, please. I need this built. We've got... Oh, it's not going to happen. Oh, my goodness. All right. Mark more of this for cutting. See, this is this is the pain of... This is the pain. This is the pain of... Of hard mode. Because it doesn't hold back. Thankfully, we got at least a half a day to a day before all of that reaches us and stops flowing. So hopefully, we can get these last three in. We've got plenty of access to the logs. The problem is they are hungry, so they're not working as fast, which means they're not building and chopping things down as fast as I would like them to be. But that's the way this cookie crumbles. We're gonna plus up the work hours. We need we need this built. No stopping. Build build the dam. Build the dam and we can keep things running, guys. That's that is your number one priority in life. If we can keep this dam in, then we can keep our food running. You guys won't be hungry ever again. We have had our first death to old age. We lost Donnie. That is sad. Nobody likes to see a dead Donnie. I don't think we're gonna make it, guys don't think we're gonna make it the food is actually popping up so that that's good all this is gonna dry out soon though if I can't get these last in come on guys come on get in there and build it let's go let's go let's go that should okay it's still leaking out that's all gonna dry up but all of this did come up. We have enough water. It is a five-day drought again. That sucks. 
But that did did do something for us. We haven't had any deaths to deaths due to hunger. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. There's our first death due to hunger. Guys, get in here and do the things, please. Go back up to 16. Because they're not going to actually pick the food up if they're not going to work. Alright, come on, guys. Come on. Come on, I believe in you. Get in there. There goes another death. We lost Epic Chill. 690 and Cat Argent. Oh, no. We're going to have a death wave. So, that's that's not good. It's not good. We've lost a total of three to hunger and one to old age. The old age is fine. I understand that. It happens. They don't have much in the way of happiness. Not fun for anybody. I'm sorry. That's just how things roll. But as long as we can get this food in. As long as we can continue. Okay, guys. I need you to stop. Citron, why? Why are you doing this to me? Come on, Gabe. Come on. They are eating. They are eating. They're eating, they're drinking, there's food. This dies in 0.9 days. So I don't want to plus up the work time again. Again, that burns through the water sources, it burns through the food sources. 0.4 days, so we're going to probably lose this half up here, and we're definitely not going to get any of these sunflowers. And none of this got built back here, and none of our lumber areas are stocked. So I'm going to drop that down. You guys, get out there. Go chop some more of those logs down, because I do want this last one finished. Then we can avoid this in the future. Avoid this pain going in the future. Come on, little guys. I believe in you. Hey, it's done. That's done. So no more of this for now. <laughs> For now. Next problem is diverting the bad tide. The one one thing I've seen, quick and early game, dirty early game, is to clear these blockages out and put in some double floodgates and just push everything this way. And then all of this stays clear water. Nothing over here. And that's helpful. It does burn a lot of lumber as well as planks so it'd be levees boom and then double flood gates and that just pushes everything this way which should be good it'll be helpful we do have our first house built so that's cool mark those up so we can slowly reproduce or regain what we've lost we lost everybody haven't lost everybody, but they don't have anything else to do right now. Come over here. You're paused. Go work over here, my my dude. Malty, come on. There we go. Chop them trees down. Nine more logs. We can get another house built. So that'll increase their well-being, which means they can reproduce. Day, day left. Hello, guys. All right, well beings up. Half of you are dead. We just lost another one. Malty just died of old age. That's that's no fun. All right, one of you are fired. Uh, K Poochter, get your butt in there. Get you chopping down some more logs. We need some more more housing in here. We can't be running out of beavers now. This is not good for us. Not good for anybody. Drop those down since nobody's actually doing anything in there. So now we've got somebody Zaraki's working on some science for us. So that'll be for the... I want to unlock levees. I want to unlock the fluid dump. Fluid dump lets us keep things irrigated during the bad tides. As well as through the droughts. Other than what we have stored in here, which will dry up. That is one of the things that they adjusted in the uh, experimental patch leading into the actual 
update 5 release. Water does not stay watery for very long. It likes to evaporate on us. Not fun. All right, we survived a little bit better that time. We have more water, we have more food, but we also only have six beavers. Explains why we didn't go through as much food or water this time. That's not fun. So I think we're gonna roll through here just a little bit longer. Check out the water, bringing life back to our helix one last time, and then we'll end this video as soon as we can get some of these log pumpers rolling again and get Ashley DMC and Zaraki in there. Nobody's working in there. That should be our only space that's not got anybody. The end. I want that one. Oh, actually, next. That's highest priority. We should have some logs coming along here shortly. UP and slip in there. Planting our carrots and sunflower seeds. Possible. Come on now. Where's my water? Come on, game. Bring it to me. There it is. Nope, that's a little splash. That's splashed over. That's not actually here yet. So it's still eking around here. There's the bringer of life. Come on now. Come on. There you go. Just a little bit further. I believe in you. Just a little bit. That's all we need. Come on. Come on. Who's a good water? Who's a good water? There we go. There we go. And we're in. And something I forgot to do is actually mark this. So I'm going to drop those down here and mark all this. Before I forget, they mark all this because there are stairs up there for them to gain access to that. Now all of this is should fill up a little bit instead of it just being at base level this should fill up to about two-thirds of a of a block now so that will last us a bit longer than just having bare 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 minimum right and we're out of food again joy 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 no 30 okay so we should have some berries coming along here shortly Get somebody in here. Pick these beer berries for us. We're out. Not good. It's not good. Not good. All right. Those went out really fast. Come on, little guys. Eat up. Eat up. Nope. They're not. They're not. Not, they're not happy. All right, Malty died of old age. Sad day. We do have three buildings now. We have three empty beds. And as soon as their well-being bounces back up, which means they get food in their stomach, that means that they're going to be able to uh, reproduce for us, which will be great. Since we didn't completely fail this first attempt at this playthrough with it. I knew. That being said, I'm going to end the So, as, uh, as I mentioned before, i show you guys what I had been working on the experimental side. This is the Thousand Island map. Uh, it's a challenging map where you've got a starting area on this little island right here. And uh, a couple pre-built stairs into this island here and then this island here. You start out and this is where your district starts out and uh, yeah you get this to all work out with and then all of this and the majority of the map is underwater the uh, uh, and then you got a number of bad tide or bad water discharge points up here as well as down here and they feed into your your good water that feeds in from up here and what I've done is uh, I had to take full advantage of the entire system and mitigate the uh, the incursion of bad tide or bad water for my entire beaver beaver populace. So this is what we have. Um, it's got uh, it's got a pretty sizable population, 142 adult beavers. Uh, I removed all of the regular breeding pods and uh, 
turn them into advanced breeding pods. So as soon as the uh, beavers are, uh, as soon as they pop out, they're adults, so they're ready to work. And then I've got 267 bots. Um, I was slowly working on transitioning from a a beaver centric, beaver heavy, bio beaver heavy, if you will, um, society into a bot heavy society where they could do all of the menial tasks. And then I was going to work or over here, create a secondary district where all of our beavers could just enjoy life and not have to deal with uh, the day to day grind of just trying to live, if you will. Um, that being said, I was slowly working up my population, overall well-being for everybody. I was uh, slowly getting that up. I didn't get the exercise plaza because I had ran out of room. As you can tell, this is a very, very uh, busy build. It's not a very clean build. This is something I've been trying to work on for a, a little while. My builds are not the cleanest. <laughs> As you can see, I've got random holler posts sitting on top of a bunch of stacks of large warehouses and everything. And then I've got, I've got engines everywhere. I've got gear shops and, and smelters, work or woodwork shops just spotted everywhere. This area, I had originally intended to just demolish everything here and clean all of this up to make it... A, bit more accessible for the uh for the bots and then over here i've got my um my bad water system or at least the uh bad water collection system over here i've got bad water refinement with my centrifuges and uh, as you can tell more and more <laughs> equipment over here just to meet the demand requirements for my uh, bots here. That was uh, quite the pain. Um, over here, this is my your your sick district. So I saw that you could actually force population, migrate population of sick beavers over into a district. It's like I need to take full advantage of it because they were they would come over here. They would go into the decontamination pods and then they'd walk 5,000 miles to go get some food or go get some water from over here. And it's like, that's not, it's not helpful. That means less time in the decontamination pods. That means it takes longer for them to get back up and healthy. And I wanted to mitigate that to the best of my ability. So I created this over here. Um, and of course I was running into canola seed problems. So I expanded as much as I could there and you can see is it's it's uh quite the eclectic development of uh beavery chaos um and then you can it just randomly dropped tributes of ingenuity randomly just shoved in with some power lines here just to try to meet the requirements everything like that and then I was having bot issues they weren't working fast enough and i was running out of science so i just threw in number crunchers where i could and it, it's it's a lot of it's a lot going on but uh what i really wanted to show is one of one of my favorite builds that i've done in this game this took about 12 hours in game to facilitate a lot of dirt a lot of wood which as you can see i i don't have the uh the biggest access to wood because i hadn't taken full advantage of all of this uh it took me a very long time to get into these bad water discharges to actually clear this area up so i could just start pumping water in here and having large swaths of uh, arable land um so i was i was limited to this and as you know oak seedlings or oaks take a, a hot minute to uh, reach maturity that all being said, this is what this is my biggest build that I've done thus far. I saw Skystorm do something similar. I was very intrigued by how he had done it, and I wanted to to replicate it to the best of my ability. Now he did it on a different map, uh, and he made his much much larger. 
the uh, the difference between mine and in Skystorms is I had a lot less to work with as far as actual land that was available. This was the island, and then there was an island uh, here-ish, and then all of this was at base level. So I had, I started from here, I built all of this up. I have in here, I have two bad water discharges, so they'll constantly be running even through a drought, which is why it's still active. As you can see, we're in the middle of a, uh, I think this was like a 23 day drought that kicked off. And yeah, here's, here's my power source. All of these are connected. They've got uh, these large water wheels. And then in here, we've got the high power shafts and that just transfers all the power up here. And all of that gets connected to the system right here. And as you can see, I've got a total network supply available of 30,000, 31,000 ish um, at peak capacity for a, for a drought. Now during a, uh, a normal season or bad tide season, this, this jumps up to about 45 to 50,000 power, um, which I was, I was really stoked with because it meant I never had to deal with a, uh, a power issue again. I could have torn all this out. All of this would have met the requirements for uh, the bot development and the food uh, creation, food uh, factory use, and I could have torn all these engines out. There's just, tearing the engines out would have torn out a portion of the power transfer, so I just left them in and left them paused. So it wasn't, it didn't hurt, it doesn't help because now that's real estate that's being taken up by an engine. But I digress. Um, let's see here. Got, got our wind tunnels. We've got our motivatorium for the um, not propaganda to make sure that our uh, our iron teeth are happy. Uh, like I mentioned, flame of unity here, tribute of unity. So our, our happiness is up. Oh, I, I die <laughs> as I repeat myself. Um, and this is this is my big water storage right so i've got i built all this up originally i had intended to run this all through with just levees then it became too much of a hassle i was running out of uh, wood very fast so i started developing i started the development of my first um where is that there we go my first dirt excavator that did okay it got the required uh, dirt to build a small little reservoir here and then like that's not enough water these droughts are getting too long I'm not getting enough uh, saved back up to keep everything irrigated so I uh, went in here I filled all of this in or I, dy I dynamited slash uh, excavated this entire area so it's nice and uh, nice and flat blocked all this in so I have a massive reservoir of water here that I can uh, pour more water into here which is where I have some of my primary pumpers at and then I've got water that gets saved up in this reservoir for my other district which this district's only job is to pull uh, pull material out of this mine that's that's the only reason why that exists and then let's see you've got stacks of just scrap metal for days over here um this district gets stuff pushed over here through this crossing they've got food they've got water they've got their own sources of water coming in as well so it's not too much of a hassle for these guys i didn't really do much for their their happiness over here so these guys kind of just come in they're they're relegated to working the fields and existing by themselves for <laughs> uh until the end of their lives sadly I, I had started working towards getting like some additional like happiness uh items built in it's just the uh i just stopped because the uh update five went live so i was like okay i'm gonna stop playing this i wanted to continue and it's like that, uh, why continue on the experimental I'm not gonna it's not it's not gonna do much for me so I, I, uh, I paused it I paused playing 
all that to say, I was I was pretty happy with how advanced this this playthrough made it. And of course, I was very happy about this. Again, it took about 12 hours in game, like 12 hours of me playing this game to get this fully built. To have all of this power flown through excessive amounts of or excavators to build all of this. And then a, a metric poop ton of, uh, of materials to start slowly cleaning all this up. So this entire side over here can be clean water, which I was, I was very, very happy with. All this is blocked in. I've got, I've got dams over here to keep the water in. And all of this is irrigated appropriately when it's a, when it's a temperate season, which is nice. And yeah, this worked out really well. I was very impressed with this. Um, when a bad tide kicks in, just increase the floodgates up to three, drop this down to zero, and that just all falls over here and out. So none of this gets touched by bad tide anymore. One thing that I hadn't started thinking about doing is having another uh, reservoir up here just so I could have even more water stockpiled just for emergency purposes. So there wasn't really much of a need for that because emergencies didn't really exist anymore. Because I had all of this water over here, even if this entire reservoir emptied out and I, I didn't have proper irrigation for some of these corners over here, I had this little pool set in so that that uh, that keeps this stuff irrigated. Nothing gets dead over here. Um, originally, before I had this put in, I had just the bad water coming down here and then just getting sloughed off onto the side of the map. Um, I wanted to stop that because I wanted to start actually using this area. That's why I built this. And that's why you'll see the irrigation barriers here. I could take gout now because none of the bad tides getting down here anymore. Um, and yeah, I I slowly started migrating the uh, the beaver populace away from actually working. Uh, I still got a few that are acting as haulers in here. Those are haulers. Okay, well, call me a liar. Game, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, all of what, 50 beavers are currently active? Or are they hiding? They're, they're hiding somewhere. I know they are. Um, doing doing menial tasks. I think uh, a lot of them were doing... Let's see here. What are they doing? What are they up to? Bum, bum, bum. Yep. Oh, a lot of them are working in the district crossing. I had a bunch working district crossings just because I needed... I needed stuff being pushed back and forth. So there's 10 there working the district crossing. And I think that was, got some working gathering flags. Two working and gathering flag. There's one hauling post with 10 beavers. And some lumberjack flags. And that, that transition could happen pretty easily. Just need to up the, uh, the actual production of bots but yeah this is this is my my best build thus far one because i've got this massive power structure that i was very very happy about and then two this is i think the highest well-being rating i've gotten thus far and then this whole system and the fact that none of it gets touched by bad tide anymore it just it made me very happy now, if I wanted to do something smart and take full advantage of the bad tide when it rolls through to get even more power into the network, I could. I could build something like that over here and just take full advantage of bad tide or even regular tide, uh, the temperate season, if you will, to get the, the water in. And if it's a bad tide, just push it off to the edge, something along those lines. But it's like, I don't think I need to do that. I reached, uh, I reached peak beaverhood. I was happy. So that's it. That's, uh, that was a bit longer of an explanation or a, a show of what's going on here, but it's, it's good. 
give it a, a playthrough so we can watch some beavers on the, uh, the wind tunnel here, having a good time. The work hours have been reduced to 12 hours, so they've got a lot of time to just hang out and do whatever they want. Got some guys in the, in the motivatorium, you know, getting their daily dose of propaganda. Um, having a grand old time. And uh, <laughs> like I said, it's it's definitely not the cleanest build. Got random things all over the place to try to up that well-being rating. Got haulers dropped in here and there just to try to help with the bot production. I was having issues with some bots or with the beavers getting the right materials to make the bots and so on. Yeah, that's it. This is my Thousand Islands playthrough. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. I look forward to doing another run, hopefully on uh, update 5 proper as opposed to just the experimental branch. So look forward to that uh, at some point. Probably going to finish this playthrough that we're currently getting through. I appreciate you all coming in. If you did enjoy the video, please hit that like button. Hit that subscribe. I am new to the YouTube scene. I've been on the Twitch scene for a little bit. Trying to push my way into a new line of, uh, of fun, if you will. Producing game videos, let's plays, for all of my friends to enjoy some new... Uh, different kind of content instead of just being trolled by a chat the entire time they can see me play a game from from beginning to end see how my mind thinks when I'm actually focusing on the game uh, you guys can understand what I am uh, trying to do in goals everything like that it's, it's it's definitely and there it is barely barely cycle or barely day five we had we had a long temperate season that's great but none of this is built or growing fully grown ah now hard mode i tell you i swear hard mode is hard guys hard mode is hard and this is actually one of my worst starts on a hard mode playthrough i am absolutely shocked at how how painful this has been i digress uh let's Ella, you are now a new oak tree cutter. That's what you are now doing. Okay, I'm going to pause it here, guys. I have said that about three times. Thanks so much for coming in. I said, if you did enjoy this, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave them down below. You can throw some comments in. Thanks so much for coming in. Have a fantastic time. Wherever you are in the world, enjoy the rest of your day. Remember to stay thirsty and hydrated, my friends. And also, keep your beavers nice and wet. I'm out. Have a good one. Catch you all later. See ya.